screen. No, yes, no, yes, no. All right, how's it going, everyone? I got to stand for this one. <laughs> this is a big deal. Wait, we're going to let some more people funnel through. Why people are funneling through, I want to just take a moment, first of all, to thank the entire Pixelogic staff, Sweat and Tears, Along the Wall, T3 from Livestream, Mike and Mike, not from ESPN, but the audio guys here, Michael and Michael, the guys in the back, everyone outside doing stuff. Please give them a round of applause and working their butt off. Thank you, guys. Something like this isn't possible to pull off uh, without an amazing team that we have here with the Pixelogic staff, the live stream people that we've been working with, with T3 being here, which his name is Thomas, he's just T3. It's not a Terminator thing. There's just several Thomas. Thomas, raise your hand. Raise the T3 hand there. He's been great for us. It's been an awesome job. You know, we got our guys over here, Michael and Michael on the audio, you know, right there. Give them a round of applause. They've been doing an amazing job for us. Uh, I also have to thank uh, the, I think it's at 29. I don't know if Damien here, are you here, or Daniel, are you here? Um, the volunteers that we have that have been willing to come out and spend their weekend with us and work with us. And then uh, Daniel and uh, Damien, I don't know if they're in here right now, who have been leading the team. There's Daniel walking through. So I wanted to thank them, too, because none of this is possible without them, two helping out. So it's definitely been a very fun day. I want to thank you guys for taking time out of calling out a sick, because I know some of you did. It called out of work. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a couple out there. I tried. They yeah. didn't let me do it. I tried. I tried. When we woke up this morning, like, let's just call out and see what happens. <laughs> I got a call. Summon ever. I got a call. So I'm really ecstatic about the stuff we've been getting online, how much traffic we're getting, people putting it on Twitter. You, you people here being very involved, it's awesome. I really want to try to make something like this happen on a regular basis. So we can't without an amazing community like you guys. And even though we're about to show you the new version, honestly to us as the development people, it doesn't mean anything until we get it in your guys' hands and you start creating the pieces of work that you guys create. It's amazing. We enjoy it more than you could possibly imagine watching these demos and watching you guys do what you do. It's, it's awesome. We, we love it. We love it. So please keep posting your work. And I want to take some time to just thank some of our sponsors that have been giving us these amazing prizes. We were trying to figure out the dollar amount we had. I say we're in the twenty, thirty thousand dollar mark. I don't even know. I might be just throwing numbers that don't make any sense, but darn it, that's where we're at. So I want to take some time again to thank 3D Total, um, Anatomy Tools. Um, they're giving product to you guys as gifts. I want to thank ArtStation, CG Meetup, and DeviantArt for helping us get this event out to you guys so you all knew that this was happening. Right, So it's very exciting for us. I also want to thank Digital Tutors. We'll be giving away some prizes over the weekend with them. 3D Systems, which we'll be presenting tomorrow. So don't forget to uh, come for that. We already gave away one of the Sense Scanners from them, which is pretty incredible. Very cool. A lot of fun with the scanners. Uh, you know, Noman, right? This space is beautiful. It's awesome. Give them a round of applause. Yeah, I'm still scrolling. There's still more. Okay, so Pin Shape, which is a great online community for you guys to even sell your pieces if you want to, get some stuff made. We'll be giving away some certificates to them. Um, Sculptio is offering you guys a discount on printing. It's 15% off, right, Tom? I'm sending out, just in case I'm throwing out numbers that don't exist. 15% off for you guys, but it's only a short period of time. What, 8 to the 15th? 8, eight of today? <laughs> To the 15th of August, okay? But they're giving you 15% off any purse, any print that you guys want to get done through Sculptio. Uh, URC, we already had Joseph just be the model today. We gave away one of the prizes already with just. I love that you did this. <laughs> perfect, it's perfect. And then we will also be giving away some Wacom product throughout the weekend. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank those people as well. Are we really ready? Let's do it, right? Are we, are we sure we're ready? We're are you ready? ready. Yeah. Let's see how ready they are. Are they ready? 
Uh, are, are they ready? Super excited. Ex super excited. So, without further ado, Joseph Dress, would you please do the honors in tapping this baseboard? Yes, do it. Go for it. So we are proud to announce the next version will actually be ZBrush 4R7, which will be the final release of ZBrush 4. Okay, we will have more information about this version as the time goes on, but we wanted to make sure you guys knew what that version is going to be and it's coming out. So, Dress, go ahead, hit it, and I'm going to stand back. I'm going to stand back. Yes, there is a 64-bit version of Zebra. Okay, so we've been very much deep in development with our 64-bit version of ZBrush. What you guys can also see, the 4R7 will be the last 32-bit version of ZBrush. But from here on out after 4R7, ZBrush will be 64-bit. But if you notice, what we're also doing for you guys, when we come out with ZBrush 4R7, we're actually also going to give everyone the 64-bit public beta as well. So you guys will have the 60, uh, 32 bit 407 and a 64 bit version to play with. Go ahead and that'll be available for your Windows and Macintosh as well. Go ahead, the next slide. We are proud to also announce a great collaboration between Pixelogic and Luxion where we have created a bridge. So what we've done is created a bridge for you guys to be able to send your models right over to Keyshot with one click, but we didn't stop there. Both teams have been working really hard to make this happen. If you notice, we're going to give you guys a special offer. For $349, you guys are going to get the ZBrush bridge and Keyshot, okay, a special Keyshot, right? So that's huge. If no one knows what Keyshot is, it's a great little renderer for you guys, and it's a great package to send things back and forth. But when we do release 4R7, we're actually going to give an introduction price. I love that. I can actually point put my yeah. hand right there for 249 So, again, you're getting Keyshot, another piece of software, and our bridge for 249 when we release ZBrush 4R7. So that'll be for a short period of time, obviously, and then after that, it'll go back up to the MSRP price of $349. You know how hard it is for me to say MSRP? Like, I slowed down. Yep, yep. MSRP. Okay, It's like ahead. the MRGBZ M yeah, go grabber. Ahead. Go ahead, I try it. MRSP. <laughs> yeah. MRGBZ grabber? Yes, the MRGBZ grabber. We did it on purpose so we can get some laughs. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Dress, and click the next one. So, what Mr. Joseph Dress and I would like to do is share some images with you guys to take a peek a little bit of what this version is even about. And we'll be also showing you this version live today as well. So, Mr. Dress, go ahead with the, let's go on to the next images. So, this is something uh, Mr. Dress actually wanted to do and see with a new tool that we have. So, he wanted to see, hey, if I had this particular tool, that we're going to be showing you today. You can see where he started with and where he ended up with for a particular tool. Um, so I don't know if you want to add something else on top of that with what you were discovering with this. Just more flexibility for your creativity. Um, it's, you'll see more when I <laughs> let's get yeah, through we'll these showing, Let's get through these images. We'll be showing some images today, and then you want to come back tomorrow and Sunday. We'll continually be showing different images throughout the three days. So go ahead. Go to the next one. Ooh. Uh, I would like to point out the geometry as well in this image, okay? Obviously architectural and the nice swooping flows. This was actually done by our very own Thomas Roussel over there in the corner. So, so yeah, I love it. You didn't get any applause, Thomas. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so something very cool with uh, one of the new features that we could do within there now. Go ahead, go to the next, next slide. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. No, nope, forget it. Uh, so this is another one done by our own Thomas Roussel, showing you guys a completely different way. So it's very cool. It also rendered in Keyshot, correct? Yes, rendered in Keyshot as well, showing the bridge capability now that we have, sending some from ZBrush to Keyshot. Go to the next one. This is something that Mr. Joseph Dress wanted to experiment and try. So if you want to go ahead and yeah, add Yeah, so your... just another, another example of something that you don't see a lot of uh, 
times done and it's uh, the new processes and things we've been working on allow this kind of creative flexibility to so really <laughs> generate ideas uh, extremely fast. Oh, this one's awesome. This <laughs> and Paul doesn't drink coffee. Yeah, by the way, I don't drink caffeine. Paul drinks no so, coffee. No, no, I don't know how you guys do it. I can't do it. So uh, this is another Mr. Joseph Drust, you know, uh, being started in ZBrush and finished off in the key shot, obviously. But your next slide, right, shows a little bit of that. There you go. So you see this coffee bean, right, that he just makes sculpted one, turn it in, and then this magical thing happened. So some new stuff there as well. Okay, so very cool idea that Joseph had for that to make the coffee beans happen. This, this is nice, right? A little different, right? Yeah. Done by, again, Mr. Thomas Rossell, you know. <laughs> oh, now you get claps. <laughs> it's the shoes. I love it. Now that you, I can just say your name and claps happen now. <clears throat> it's, now it's, it's even better than the finger. <laughs> it's, it's like Thomas Rossell. <laughs> I love it. gets up and starts dancing. <laughs> now, you didn't mention that. Tomas might be wearing these. Uh, <laughs> right. It's going to be a challenge later on tonight. Can he continue to keep walking with them? <laughs> so this is actually showing off a particular feature that we'll be showing throughout the weekend. Um, it's one of the features uh, that Thomas was able to make happen actually very quickly. Yes. yes. Very quickly. That yeah, was, all these images you're seeing, too, are like basically one night. So Yeah. They, we were getting some stuff done really, really, really quick with some of these new features. So... Next one. Oh, yes. Uh, what? Yeah. What? Did that get robotic? <laughs> like it did get a little robotic. robotic. That's cool. So this, again, was done by Mr. Joseph Dress showing, you know, this is where we started, you know, experimenting. Well, what about product? Is there something maybe we can start pushing the element even with that and trying to make something that we all can tangibly hold and see on a regular basis? Well, not me, but he's Mr. Military. Um, <laughs> And he goes, well, can I pull this off, right? And it really didn't take you that much time no, to even pull this off. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. done pretty quick. And you can see, again, uh, a showing off the bridge again, going from ZBrush to Keyshot. So very cool piece indeed. So, And then this was inspired by Joseph Drust. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's been talking to me too much. Yeah. This is something I did to try and do the same thing Joseph and I were talking about. Let's try and pick some items and see how quick we can do these and how fast that we can make this. all these... The Z missiles. The Z missiles. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, <laughs> this is part of a bigger piece that I'm working on. But uh, we and Joseph and I were trying to challenge ourselves along with Thomas to see what we can do with some of these new features. So this was actually a pretty quick process too. And I, I got so in the rhythm of making this that it was a lot of fun. And I started going off into weird tangents. For those that know me, that's never not necessarily a good thing. But I started going off those tangents. So again, trying to just play a little bit more with like some product that exists and see what we can come up with that. All right, this is a uh, Mr. Joseph Drust, which some of you might recognize. <clears throat> it's uh, a Caprica Viper. I'm sorry, what? It's based on the Caprica Viper. Okay, Battlestar. Okay, sorry. Battlestar. Anybody? I know, no I know, one? I know, I know. Don't throw anything. Out. I haven't watched it yet. He's trying to get me to watch Battlestar. Well, this is the this is the second series. Okay, so it's see, okay. I don't even know yeah. anymore. <laughs> okay, so this is something that you actually got this done overnight too. Yeah. Yeah, it was really quick. In fact, I think you did this in like four hours, right, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I was using coffee, though. That, that was the use of coffee. Was yeah. it the use of the coffee from the previous piece? Yeah. Oh, then you guys yeah. probably recognize this, for those that are big fans. Drust, do you want to tell them what this, for the people that don't recognize? This is a version of the Metal Slug from a series of games. And I'm not seeing the slug part. Where is it? The slug is the bullet. Oh, and look. Yeah. Look at Mr. Everyone. Jaime LaBelle. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> So another representation that, uh, using the stuff we have in there right now, this was, I just fed it right to a 3D printer and printed it out. So I did no cleanup on this piece. So it needs sound effects. I don't know. Yeah, it's right off the printer just like this, right? Right, right, right out of ZBrush. So here, let, yeah. me, let, let the live stream people see it as well. Okay, now. No, I'm just kidding. So very cool, right? Straight out of ZBrush, you know, so he was able to do that. It was a very cool print. Oh, yes, Mr. Thomas Rossell also got in the game of let me try and make a real product as well. So this is something that he did. The Arno. Yeah. So really cool. I had a lot of fun making that. And he got that done pretty quick, too, I'd have to say. I was, it was cool seeing the, the time frame that he did this in. It was awesome. Very cool, right? Yeah, awesome. Oh, yes, another, another 
You can't have a release without some big Jeep thing or something. <laughs> or in this case, a military thing, because it's Joseph that did this one. So this is, again, something Joseph wanted to experiment and see how fast he could kick something like this out. And again, this is something different that maybe all of us wouldn't necessarily try right away in ZBrush. But now with these new tools that we're about to show you, this is something that we would go ahead and try and give it a spin. And I think I think you had a blast in this. And you, yeah, you use a couple. This one's got a few variations on yeah, it. Yeah, you use a couple of the new features. You mm -hmm. grab a couple here and there and you make this happen. It was really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is another Mr. Joseph Dress piece. You can tell the color scheme again. Paul's going to come out on military. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just expecting him to give me like a gift for my wedding and camouflage. <laughs> camouflage. So, yeah, this is another piece by him to, uh, you know, have again pushing the element of some of the new features and seeing what he could do with that and then bridge it over to Keyshot. That's it. And then, and then that's it for the image. Okay, so you know what's next, Struss? Do you know? Do they know what's next? We know. We're going to now show you guys some of these new features. There he is. It's a cube. <laughs> We're done. That was the best up ever for a cube. And you can rotate it too. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. And it's multicolor. <laughs> so, uh, my late grandfather, he was a wood duck carver, and uh, he was always curious. Um, one of the things he would tell me was that he was always fascinated with what people could create out of a single block of wood. So now we have Hollywood. almost a digital version of this kind of methodology. So I'm going to be curious to see what you guys create when you actually get this version in your hand out of a single block of mesh inside a ZBrush. So I'm not going to go through my normal spiel where I'm going to tell you everything. I've got to leave some allure, right? So, but there will be numerous Z Classroom tutorials where you can hear my soft voice. I have a feeling you might be making some. I may. I may. Okay. I may. That will be released on the thing, so uh, Paul actually is probably going to jump in and uh, do some stuff here as I actually sculpt this guy. I think it looks great. It's a cube. <laughs> it is a cube. What more do you need to do? <laughs> oh, we're not done. We're just getting warmed up. So he's using a new feature that we have that allows you to just push and pull. And he's going to show you something really cool. Oh, delete instantly. Oh, what? I just wanted to join in the watch. You want? Should I do it again? Wait, 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 wait. We have, we have to test it. Thomas Russell. <laughs> The next, the next time we do that, go look at him because he gets up and does this thing. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. Continue on because we're just getting warmed up. <laughs> so, Joseph, what are you making here, by the way? Just so uh, Okay, so this one is kind of just a collaborative, creative process. Um, I have some sort of idea, but a, one of the powers of ZBrush is that you can actually come through and explore your ideas fast and quick and make changes on the fly and kind of go through and see exactly, you know, experiment. So I'm not working on anything with a precision kind of element. I'm actually just going through and just looking for ideas on the model here as I kind of work with it. So I have a vague idea, but you guys aren't going to know what it is until I uh, start pulling out some more shapes here. Yeah, so he just deleted an edge loop there for those that didn't catch that. So really quickly, he's doing a nice little, oh, a nice little painting. And then, you know, you know, you got to make pieces fast. You know, I know my man over here, Justin, feels like to make suits and many other people. So some great ways to do that right now. The, the, the gears are turning right now? Already. The gears are turning. <laughs> so, and you can see he's deleting a face, you know, really quickly. Um, he's going to do something pretty cool. Ooh. Right? So you can think of Thomas's shoes, how fast it was now to make those shoes, right? So it's a nice little bridging capability, um, which has many options to it. He's inserting some edge loops here. Just little edge loops. I love them like I'm like a play-by-play. -play. I feel like uh, I like, like the play-by-play. Play. It's, it's nice. The old show. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. We're not taking questions. Yeah. So he's just grabbing. Obviously, again, low polygon as well, right? Keeping it nice and low. Be able to just, as he said, design and think about what he's trying to make and be as quick with it as he could. Oh, it just bridged together between the two pieces right there. 
I don't know if I like that one though, Paul. No, okay, get rid of it. Let's get so rid of it. anyway, pause for that because put that back. Under, there, there you go. So the really thing what he did here is he bridged automatically, and then he said, "I don't like that," and just pushed down, and we got rid of it instantaneously. <coughs> so and again, for us, when we're developing, it's artistic workflow. It's about we don't know as an artist sometimes where we are going. We want to design and develop, and so when we're putting ZBrush together and these some of these new features. We also are thinking that way. We're thinking the way you guys, as community and ladies, um, think when you're when you're an artist. Because the entire company actually are artists. Everyone in the company is an artist. So I think that's the fun part of this. I don't even think I need to talk. You can just start pushing things around. This I, I like pushing it. things around. Yeah. It's nice. It's, it's great. Nice. It's a nice feeling. I love it. I love it. Is this like a sci-fi couch or something, maybe? It, it might be a sci-fi couch, uh, maybe. It could be a military couch, though. So this, you never know. You're going to do another bridging thing here? Oh, yeah, just a little bridge, bridge here. Another maybe bridge. Just do a little Notice, too, that he's changing the spans on the fly. Um, he can change the distance also at the same time. Yeah, let's on the let's do it at a better angle. So okay. Yes, see. There, there you go. go. And then yeah. see now he's changing and playing with the distance a little bit. So Just, just tweaking it a little. Yeah. A little massage. Go ahead. Yeah. Thomas Marcel. <laughs> Thomas, I tell them to look at you when I say your name and then you don't get up and do your little dance? <laughs> What's up, man? Did you get stage fright? Come on. So, again, he's painting quickly like a poly grouping in essence, and then Thailand in essence is saying this is actually what I want to use to pull off the surface and make a new surface, right? So I even think about what Max is showing with the panel loops. In essence, it's almost like instantly panel looping things on the fly in a way. Right? To give you guys that all... Uh, hey, is that an extrusion you're doing right there? It is an extrusion. Oh, is it uh, stepping? It, it's doing a little stepping. Mm, mm, mm. It, it's wearing the shoes Thomas has on. I like that. I like So he has an extrusion capability as well, inserting his edge loops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you going to soften this up? At, think? I, think, I think I need to do a little softening. I think you should. I think you should at this point in time. I think it would be a good time. Oh, what is this? Oh... Uh, so what we have here is a new subdivision, which is called dynamic subdivision levels. So the beauty of this is Joseph can continually work and go back and forth, back and forth, and look at the low cage, the subdivision cage, and if you want to go ahead and show him that you can edit on the fly, too. Yeah. So he's got a yeah, new Nice slider. and smooth now. Yeah. 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 So you just threw some creasing on there, right? I did. I threw some creasing on you there. You did it with one button, I think, right? It was one button. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking it was going to be two, but it was one. No, no, no. It was, it was one. one. You were good. So he can continually, even though this is not the low cage, right? It's the subdivided version, and he's changing his creasing on the fly, and you can see it updating on the fly on the dynamic surface, which we would all love to have, right? Especially for me, that's a big hard surface guy. I want to see my stuff going, you know, my beveling or anything else work the way I would want it to work. So this is a new mode of subdivision. This, this edge looks a little bit harsh, doesn't it, Paul? What? The Yeah, I think harsh? you can change that. I think so. Oh, Bevel. Oh, Bevel. Oh, Bevel. Does that, does that look better? Do you like oh, that one better? Go for it. Oh, go for it. Well, that, and maybe, I don't know. You like it hard or soft? Uh, go soft. Let's, let's add some more rows to it. Let's, add let's some go more soft. Yeah, and add go soft. soft. Yeah. There. Bueller. Bueller. Let's see what it looks like smooth. Oh, oh that might be too oh, soft. Oh, that's nice. Way. This made my day. I had a tear fall on my keyboard when this feature came. <laughs> As, as a hard surface person, like, oh my god, there we go. That's a pretty good curve oh there. God. Yeah, That's and again, mind you, take a look at his polygon count at the top too. So hit the uh, hit the hit that little shift M. Hit that little magnifier so they all can see. Go up to the <laughs> polygon count, right? Do you see his polygon count, right? But look what you're looking at. You're looking at the subdivided surface. Okay, so this mode also. Okay, how many features you guys have in ZBrush where you can't use it? Like maybe mirror and weld, where you want to use it, but you have a subdivided surface. Guess mm -hmm. what? Dynamic mm -hmm. subdiv will mm -hmm. actually work on all that stuff now. You know, you know, slicing. You want to throw a little slice on there, maybe? Just a little slice. What do you think? A little slice like a cake. You know, we're giving them the pie. All right, all right. Just give them a piece, though. Not all of it. Just give them a piece. <laughs> so again, I'm reiterating. This is a subdivided surface you're looking at, and he's using now those slicing brushes on it, right? So options awesome. you couldn't do with uh, subdivisions. No, could not. You could not do that. But now that you have a dynamic subdivision, you totally can do it. Oh, that's nice. 
Just make, just make a little shake here. I like it. Should you move on to maybe another piece, or are you still feeling your couch? Oh, we can show some other stuff. Do you think Let's they're ready? Stuff. They yeah, might, yeah, they yeah, might yeah. Be show ready. some more. I don't think actually, they're... actually, I got to do one more thing to the couch. Okay. Though. I got to do one more thing. I really like it. Can I buy it from my house? Print it. You might be able to. Okay, keyword where you can only show you some features. Do it, do it again, Drust. Do it again? We have a request. Okay, okay, we can do it again. Do it again! Oh, wait, you want me to pull oh, it out? Wait for oh, it, oh, wait for oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. There you go. This is going to be a cushion, but we'll move on. That looks like a floating pillow that you're going to a minute sit down. And it's so the light cut. and yeah. fluffy that yeah. it floats. That's right. <clears throat> it's the ZBrush offering table. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, there you go. There's your knives. What's the cool thing? Do you want to magnify that again? I'm going to magnify yeah, it again. Yeah, do it again. Right? How many knives do you think I can put in this thing? You know, you know, it is 60 palm, orbits, right? you know what, I like, I like th this part right there. What, are you stealing my thunder right now? Show the polyframe, Drost. <laughs> good, good. No, I'm just kidding. So you can see that, drop it to the low one, too, so that they can see, you know, a little bit what you did there. Oh, turn off the color. By the way, he's using the 64-bit version right now, just so you know. So you can see what he did here. Think about... What he's doing here with the geometry is you keep it low and still put in, you know, little shapes in there, right? Bananas, I like that. Bananas. Bananas. Maybe we'll hide that somewhere in the post. <laughs> this, is, this is bananas. <laughs> and only the people that are at the summit knows that one. That's nice. So, right? So he's able to duplicate this knife multiple times, and, you know, he's not having any problems. Send that over to Keyshot when he wanted to send it over. Mm -hmm. so very, and you know, you know, I want to point out the blade because you and I had a big conversation about the blade, right? Yeah. You and I jumped on around night. Yeah, talking about. I don't that. know if you guys have ever tried to make a, a blade. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> oh. Right. Well, now. Right. So, and because of the dynamic, he can see. Hey, here, I just throw in an edge loop. I, want I don't want to just crease. Yeah, and come in and just unchange the crease levels and just get rid of them. Now I got a non-serrated edge. And not only that, you just uncrease an edge loop. It wasn't just one. See that? He just increased an entire edge loop as well there, which was pretty cool. Yeah. So, again, this was something him and I had a conversation about because this was always something difficult for even him and I. Are we ready, ready, yeah. ready to move on? Are we ready to move on? Yeah, yeah, move on. Move on. I'm excited. I don't even want to know what's next. Oh, there's the light. Nice and clean. I shine on you. Is that, what my, is that what you want me to shine on? Yeah. Right? So this has become a very fun workflow in development, seeing stuff very low cage, but then throwing dynamic subdivision level on, which he has on right now, so he can see the smooth parts. So this is it off. But now he wants to see, well, what's that going to look like smooth? And he just clicks a button. And now he can see those, those turned on and off. So it's a, it was a lot of fun being able to design and develop with uh, this new mode in a way that we have. It's shining right. some light on them. All right. Next piece? Next piece. Next piece. So, let's hop over to our friend here, Keisha. So this is a uh, little item that I made, and uh, once again, back to the military What a stuff. surprise, if your name. <laughs> and this was all done wait in... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Every time I talk to them, so what do you think you're going to make? I don't know. Let's see. What military thing could I make? I'm going to challenge you to make, like, I don't know, something, a butterfly or something. Bunny yes, a, a bunny, bunny rabbit. rabbit. A bunny you know what's going to happen? The bunny rabbit's going to have a gun in its hand. And it's going to be wearing some metal gear thing on its hat. <laughs> if I know Joseph. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so this is actually all in key shot here. So I'm just showing you guys this first. So I'm going to go through a little demo again, showing some of the key shot or uh, the features inside of uh, ZBrush here. And just kind of how I created this. And then we'll show you some other cool stuff. So back to ZBrush. Now this uh, whole That's a grenade. That's cylinder. Awesome. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were quizzing us. It is, is it a cylinder? It is. It is. <clears throat> so simple primitives. I've already gone through and 
As you saw, I have the dynamic subdivision mode active. And that's probably going to be the end of my talk. So I'm just going to come through and do some quick modeling on this. This is coming through and doing some stuff here. So adding some loops. Notice he went in and out of that mode right there, too. He went from the dynamic to the hard surface. So a little, little additive features on the side there. I think the whole grenade ended up taking you, like, what, a couple hours? Not even? Yeah, not much. Yeah, after you, you got your design down? Or it, no, it's, it's creation. There you go. So he's quickly making pieces for his grenade, deciding what he wants and where he wants to make those pieces. And then, you know, now he's got his nice little piece little on the rubber, top. rubber on the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's right pretty there. good. That's pretty good there. Nice. I'm just going to make weird noises now. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, yeah. So now he switched from, hey, I actually don't want to turn that into another piece. I just want to move it up and give it that nice, a different little beveling and adding an edge loop now to it. He did, he did cut an edge loop. Now he, he wants obviously circular pieces. You gotta have the circular piece. You have to. It's, you have to. It's mandatory. Creased it's as well, cool. right? Yeah, they're already creased. Yeah. There you go. So now he's got that. Let's go ahead and add a little more crease The best there. reaction was down front. <laughs> So we got, we got those looking like a little bit of rubber items there. Again, he's really low cage right now, too. So just having some fun. This is a creative process, too, with this, this mode and this feature. And then we need something for that primer cap to kind of sit in. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like I that. I know where you're going. I know where you're going with this. Yeah. I agree with this, by the way, what you're about to do. So again, he's painting kind of not a gizmo, painting, right? In a way, he's deciding what he wants to be in essence a new poly group. So there you go. Instantly, that's a panel. That's a poly loop poly group instantly. You know, because poly groups are such an important feature in ZBrush, that allow you to do so much more. So that's beveling on the fly, right? And he's depicting. He's telling ZBrush how many loops he wants in those bevels. Right? So you can see how quickly he's starting to already make a grenade happen in front of you guys. Right? Why we talk, by the way. So that's always the fun part. So get this. Nice. Looks good. Yeah, we got the button. Yeah, go to the middle part now. I think yeah, they'll love yeah, that. Yeah, go, yeah, go, go to the middle part. Line. They'll love that part. So that's a little, some more lines in here. Yeah, <laughs> no big deal. Just add them. So again, that's again him picking what he wants to play with polygrouping wise, like some of you guys are used to as ZBrush users. Okay, <coughs> so he wants to throw a bevel on there. More okay. bevels. We have it now, so why not? <laughs> Just saying. Uh, yeah, there, there. In the honor, I think it was Justin. There, who was that doing the Bob Ross? Immediately, all this mess, right? <laughs> Immediately got me right to Bob Ross. Happy little trees. Oh, so he just made a whole new ring, right? Whole new ring with that feature. <coughs> this is a fun thing. What he's about to do. Uh, this 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 was a lot of fun playing with with this. I'm trying to build it up right now. You're trying to build it up to get I, you guys excited for it. Is what I'm trying to do. Polygrouping. I'm just saying. Ready? Watch. Wait for it. Wait, wait for, for it. it. Wait for wait it. Wait for it. Ooh. Ooh. And, and, and radial symmetry, right? It's not it on every single face. Cheesy. You know, why don't you turn off symmetry and show it to them, Dress? All right. All right. Undo. Turn off symmetry. Turn off symmetry. It's off. It's, it's off. off. No symmetry. Boom. What? <laughs> Thomas Russell. So this is how, if you guys remember his image that he was showing you, how he made those little pieces. Hey, you know what? You know what? You can show them right there. I'm, I'm super excited about the transpose line. You may do Oh, please show them. Please show them. <gasps> what did it do? What did it do? 
It looks like it's in the center of everything. Shut it right now. Transpose line in the center of your geometry. <laughs> Wait, wait, let, my chair. Let, let's try that again. Let's just pretend it's over here. Wait, wait, but notice it's masked as well. It appreciates masking as well. Go ahead. Let's it's over here. Let's do it. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Pixelogic. Wait, I worked there. Okay. <laughs> so, and it does appreciate the masking. So if you notice, it's centering around actually those green pieces only. It's looking at those and centering the transpose line based upon that. So it's a nice little addition um, that I've always wanted for when I'm doing hard surface with inside the brush. Oh, adding an edge loop quickly, are you? Yeah, yeah, because he wants to make it a little more squared, right? He doesn't want to have it round, so he's just throwing an edge loop there. That's what yeah, it looks like. Yeah, I'm not liking that. No. We're gonna have to go back and do a little change here. Go ahead, we won't, we won't, we won't mind. Wait, 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 that was cool. Can you do that more though? Just. Yeah, do it all. Yeah. That was cool, dude. Wait, undo and do it again. You want to go the other way? It. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anybody yeah. wanting this like four months ago or 12 years ago? Yeah, right? Right. How about now? <laughs> <laughs> We've got it on our computers. <laughs> so obviously he was, again, without symmetry, making it happen on all the faces at once which is part of what this mode can do for you, you know? Again, we're thinking about artistically, can we make this as fast as possible for you as an artist? Because yeah. there might be times you don't know where you're going, and you're just trying to design something and come up with an idea. Looks pretty much like a rubber ring now. That's like the that commercial. Good. What is it? Like, I need it now. <laughs> what is it? I don't remember. The, I just remembered it in my head. JJG. JJG. <laughs> I don't even know, but I just remember that part. It's good marketing. <laughs> so should we move on? Should we move on? What do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think you should move on. All right, let's go to the end. Let's go to the uh, end. Yes. A really bright grenade. <laughs> let's, let's show it what it looks like before it's a really bright grenade. Okay. Let's show some wires on this. Actually, I'm going to show one more. Hey, you know what? You did something that some people might not know that's in the current ZBrush. With the paintbrush, uh, people might not know that one. Yeah, yeah, you might want to talk about that one. So if you hold shift and click the paintbrush icon, it's going to turn colorize off on all your tools. All your self tools. So if That's you have a bunch of right colorized information, you can just turn it on off. An existing feature got a clap. <laughs> Thomas Marcel, everybody. <laughs> Let's not kill it. Okay. <laughs> He's going to get danced out over there in his high heel shoes. So you're just randomly picking things right now where you want to put some holes? Is that what I think you're going with this? Did maybe. You yeah, maybe. Let's put, let's put so again, there. he's just deciding what he wants to work on, right? So he's picking particular faces to do and decide what he wants to do. So again, he's doing an inset, right? Even though they're all over the place now. Obviously, something like radial symmetry wouldn't work for this. Yep. And then he needs, he needs a hole, right? Oh, I'll find, I may do it later. sticking out. Some yeah, sticking do it later. Out. Do it later. Uh, Some little pin thing or something. Or a step. <laughs> there we go. This is like a game. What is that game? It looks like a game now. I don't remember the piece. Now it's got a landmine type goal. But obviously the key thing here, guys, that he's showing is that they're just sporadically all over the place. And he was able to make those happen in, in, you know, in essence, one click pulling out. Yeah, and all these pieces were all made in a similar fashion, so you can see they all have very clean kind of geometry through the entire object. And you can model them really low, and then come in and add just creasing in different spots, and you end up with a nice polished look for items. Yeah. So very fast. So now, should I take it? Take it over to... Uh... Go for it. You know, I think this is a good way to show how you could use this kind of as a sculptural concepting thing, too. Mm -hmm. Not even mm -hmm. just a final mm -hmm. piece. You mm -hmm. can send stuff and go back and forth with. I so think. Let's, just, let's just send that over. All right. Send it over. All right, there it's there. Go. It's there. Wow. That was, that was pretty fast. So you can see his updates are there. Instantly in Keyshot, right? His little whatever nubs. They pulled mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's let's say I don't I don't want those anymore, Paul. You know, you no. Know what's key though? 
Wait, it was key before you didn't have those nubs. The materials were all there, and you sent that one over, and then all the materials stayed. All right, that's nice, right? Go let's ahead. say let's say I don't want all those nubs. Let's, okay, let's go, go ahead. back. All right, we're gonna go back in time a little bit. There we go. Maybe something like that. Yeah, put your material. Oh, that's pretty. All right, now let's send that back. Let's see what it looks like now without the nubs. Uh, yeah. Good. Good. That's yeah. what I want right there. Let's say, let's say some of the, I don't know, the, the housing is really weak on one spot. Let's see okay. if we change that. So this is a great example that he's showing kind of just, hey, I'm just trying to discover right now and see if that's going to work or not, right? So he's going back and forth and figuring out let's what design is really going to work for him. Something. And he's using Keisha kind of as a visual concepting looking at piece. It was left in the sun. That's beautiful. Yeah. There, exploded. And notice the material, he turned the material off, so it sent the material that he had selected in the material palette now mm -hmm. over to Keyshot. So that's right, all the materials in ZBrush will go over to Keyshot. Mm. And everything else updated now that he put the material back on his piece, it sent it over Keyshot. and updated. So you now again can go back and forth, back and figure out what kind of material you want, what do you want to do with this. So that's that's beautiful to be able to have that at, our, at your disposal now as an artist. That's so artistic. maybe I just want to isolate the glowy part, Paul. What okay. Do you that? What do you think about that? All right. Is that the official term, glowy part? Glowy part. That's what I'm calling it. Okay. Is that what we're going to use from here on out? Is the glowy part? Maybe some. Just want to see what it looks like underneath there. Section materials. Radioactive. Yeah. That's, right. that's what it looks like. All right. I'm going to just put the plastic. Just put the plastic. Part. Okay. We can never make a decision. <laughs> no, that's the beauty of, uh, yeah. Figure out what you want, get it over there, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Let's try different things out. So this became a really fun workflow for us to be able to go back and forth between the two apps and have this smooth capability going back and forth as well. And then of course, all the tools will transfer over, so any of your sculpting, you quickly send it back. That's, unless you got anything else, Paul. I, I, I have plenty of things. But we're only things. showing some features right now. That's right. So tomorrow anything. we're going to show additional items. More. Who's More. coming tomorrow? <laughs> Wait. Here, here's the good question. How many people just tweeted, Facebook, coughed it, everything up right now about what we were just showing, right? So we are very, very excited to get this in your guys' hands. So we need you guys to keep an eye on our websites. We'll be updating you as we go, when the releases will happen, when the release happens, okay? So <clears throat> this has become a really seamless workflow for you as an artist, specifically between the two applications, creating things like this, and being able to go back and forth yeah. um, between these. So like I say, you just keeps updating and changing. So we got more features to show you throughout the weekend. So I want you to make sure you stay tuned Right? We have the live stream going. For those that have mobile capabilities, you can download the live stream app as well. So that's it for this version right now, but I got prizes to give away. <laughs> so we're going to start again with our little art digital lot community one. because we want to make sure everyone that is involved in this can be a part of what we're doing here. Okay? So. This first prize is for the live stream audience. So, our, hold on, I gotta get my little questions up in here. Come on, can you send me the questions? Okay, so uh, we're gonna be giving away tonight, we're gonna be giving away.